Doing my makeup can be very boring and very lonely. And so I thought, why not do it with my internet friends and we'll play a game at the same time. There is a game called Don't Even Get Me Started that you normally play in a car when you're on a road trip and really bored or something. And essentially you take first world topics about things that are mildly annoying and you come up with rants or pain points about why they are so horrible and you just kind of roll your tires on those. So that's what we're going to do today. I posted on the Instagram stories and I asked people which topics they wanted to see. And apparently a lot of you have the same pet peeves that I do. So let's get our makeup brushes out and let's get started. Don't even get me started. <laughs> We're going to start off by priming the face with the Photo Matte Anti-Shine from Smashbox to keep this nose oil under control. We're also going to have a little bit of hydration because I always remind you to stay hydrated. <laughs> mm. However, this also brings us to the very first topic that you chose on Instagram, which is the opposite side of staying hydrated. The fact that you have to pee every five minutes and nobody warns you about it. That was a nice segue, wasn't it? Segue! You see, I will be the very first to tell you to stay hydrated, uh, to tell you to drink your water, and to remind you to take care of your skin on the inside and the outside. However, there is a second half to it. You see, our bodies are great and our kidneys generally know how to function, but unfortunately they can do their job a little bit well sometimes. Now, I have to say, I only have one kidney, so my one kidney is doing the work of two, which should mean that I have to pee less often than other people, right? Wrong! My bladder is basically an ADHD child and it doesn't shut up or leave me alone. The very worst part is when you're going to bed at night and you've already had a long day and you've just tucked yourself into the sheets, you're getting all cozy, and you realize that you have to take a piss. <laughs> especially when it's cold in the dead of winter. And if you do decide to go to the bathroom, you then have to put your feet on the cold tile floors of the restroom, unless you literally want to stumble across your room and actually find a pair of slippers. It's a very first world problem, but it is one of the most frustrating. This is the CoverGirl True Blend Concealer that I'm blending into my face. And it's supposed to keep my face undercover the way I wish I could remain, but no, when the bladder calls, you must relieve it. It's not really my color. I thought that it would be for the change of seasons, but it's not. But that's what foundation in a darker shade is for. That's also what blending is for. Blended. Speaking of other bad advice that you get from the internet, aka other things that people tell you to do, um, let's talk about juice cleanses that people tell you to drink. Not just staying hydrated, but buying their weight loss shakes or their Shakeology or their Arbonne diarrhea cleanse. <laughs> This is a Bite Beauty Agave Balm that I'm going to use before I put on my foundation because I always make the mistake of putting my foundation on and then my lips become like this chalky, dead corpse color. And I'd like to keep them a little bit closer to their natural shade. And putting on lip gloss just makes it that much easier to remove any mistakes that you make. Mwah. Does anyone else just like eat excess lip products off their fingers? Maybe I'm a freak. But I just have to say, I've been doing it for like six years. And if it's gonna go on my lips, I might as well eat the excess so I don't have to ruin my clothing. Because guess who doesn't do her makeup next to a towel? Instagram has changed a lot over the years. And one of the main things is that you now cannot log onto the platform and not see someone trying to literally shove their brown mushy goo down your throat. When I asked you guys about this one on Instagram, it won by a long shot because it seems like every person and their mom and Kylie Jenner is doing some green tea cleanse. And don't get me wrong, I tried a cleanse once before. It was, wow, probably five years ago. And let me tell you, it didn't take 10 inches off my waist. All it did was make me shit pebbles with a lot of water. <laughs> These cleanses are not just stupid, but they're actually dangerous. Um, there's a reason your body doesn't normally have diarrhea, and it's because your body needs to absorb nutrients. It needs to digest food. And when you take these tea cleanses, yeah, you're gonna see a weight drop on the scale, but it's because you've literally taken off your insides. Like, the average human head weighs eight pounds. So just cut off your head and you can finally lose those last couple pounds. Not solid internet advice, my friends. Okay, 
There's this one, this Arbon Colon Cleanse. They're basically these little pills of death. Um, they taste like hell warmed over, but you're supposed to take them and cleanse your colon. And let me tell you, being someone on the internet, I get bombarded by MLM people trying to get me to join their team and create people in their downstream so that they can earn money and rip even more people off, right? I'm targeted constantly by them because they don't see us as a community. They just see, oh, you have how many followers? You can sell how much crap? It's like, uh-uh, honey, it doesn't work that way here. This ain't YouTube circa 2015. <laughs> And this definitely isn't HSN. Well, basically, one of these distributors, otherwise known as a Hunbot, jumped into my inbox and was like, let me give you these products. They're from Arbonne. They're going to clear your skin. They're going to be amazing. Spoiler alert, didn't clear my skin. Another spoiler alert, they weren't amazing. They were basic salicylic acid. And on top of that, she gave me these Colin's Cleanse pills, telling me that I had to take these in order to make my skin clear and for the entire regime to work together. So I take these pills for about two weeks and I don't know why I did not stop by the third day because I was literally shitting green. The pills themselves were brown, maybe it was everything else I was eating, but I was miserable. My stomach was cramping, it felt like my liver and my gallbladder were both on overdrive, and I couldn't even concentrate or live my life, because instead of having to run to the bathroom every five minutes because I was hydrated and having to pee, it was because I had taken this stupid colon cleanse pill and I was pissing out my butthole. <laughs> I'm sorry to be so vulgar and I'm sorry to be TMI, but if you're about to buy one of those little green tea cleanses, you deserve to know what you're getting yourself into. Which another segue brings us to the next topic that you chose on Instagram to rant about, which are MLMs, otherwise known as multi-level marketing. This, by the way, is 100% pure uh, powder that I used on my face because it doesn't give me the breakouts. And I also put it on my chesticles because thanks to the strategically cropped camera angle, you can't see that I'm having a major breakout. Yeah! Fun times with hormones. Unique is one of the MLMs in particular that we should touch on, and they're currently being sued because their makeup is so shitty and their mascara is giving people eye infections. If you just take like five minutes to go on Reddit or on Google Images, you can see that these are genuinely people who think that they are applying their makeup well. And they think that these products are working with them. And let me tell you, there is an aspect of it that takes creativity and practice and a good makeup brush instead of one of the stupid little sponges. But a lot of it does have to do with the product. You gotta make sure that you're using stuff that actually works, that actually blends, and that doesn't make your eyes look like your parents are tarantulas. Spider lashes! It's not a genetic trait, my friends. When I actually check, it looks like the reason that they were being sued is for unsubstantiated claims. Essentially, uh, Unique, the company, told their representatives that the mascara was made with green tea fibers. My green tea doesn't have fibers in it, so who knows what they were talking about. But apparently what they were talking about was BS because it was actually ground up nylon, which takes away some of the natural claims that they were also pushing. And again, I know that people were getting eye infections, but it sounds like they may not have sued for the eye infections. And when it comes down to it, hun, a lot of the stuff that we use can cause eye infections. So how do you know it's from that specific product? Nonetheless, this is a makeup brand that across the board from their foundations to their mascaras to their eyeliners doesn't perform well. Yet you have these Hunbots, who you haven't spoken to since high school, that pop up in the Facebook inbox that you barely check, trying to get you to be your own boss and join them in a business opportunity in which you can sell products and recruit other people, like your friends and family, underneath you. And let me tell you, pretty quickly, you won't have any friends and family to recruit because they will have all blocked you, just the way I currently do to Hunbots that show up in my inbox. The other thing that pisses me off hugely is that they claimed to be vegan, and they were not. You see, the thing with being vegan or cruelty-free is that many people consider this a lifestyle choice. It's not just about health and wellness. And for some people, it's even religious. And the fact that a company or representatives from said company tell lies just to make sales is disgusting. And that's the problem here. 
MLMs themselves get away with this by saying, we're not directly making the claims. It's the people who are selling our products that are making the claims. But you see, when it comes to MLMs, the people who are selling the products are contractors or independent distributors, which means they're not technical employees of the company. So not only do they not get benefits or good wages or dental or health or medical, but the MLM also doesn't have to be held responsible for the things that they say. And that's where we get a lot of these horrible stories about people making false claims that it'll clear your skin, or in the case of these essential oils, it'll reverse your depression, or that it's vegan or cruelty-free, etc. when it's really not. And that, my friends, is just the tip of the MLM iceberg. Because remember, an MLM is a triangle, and so is an iceberg. And most of the dangerous stuff is down deeper, where you actually have to dig in order to see it. By the way, did anybody notice that I legitimately used eyeshadow as my highlight? Fun fact, you don't have to spend a million dollars on makeup. The highlight color that's a little bit shimmery, that you barely ever hit pan in one of the hundred eyeshadow palettes that you have, is a perfectly good replacement for the little amount of highlighter that you are going to use on the bridge of your nose and the top of your cheeks. You and your wallet can thank me later. I also used, where is it? Um, this Pacifica little blush palette. I really like it. Pacifica is more natural and they're an actual company, not an MLM. And then I also used this Catrice. It has some little stars on it. It's South Beach Bronzer. And I put that on my contour. Stab, -de stab, stab, stab. Now that we have blended to smithereens, let's get out our brushes and an eyeshadow palette. This one is basically from Christmas. And the next thing that you voted for on Instagram was a rant about the tiny, shitty, disposable makeup brushes that literally come in every single drugstore palette or product. I'm sorry, it's 2019 and this doesn't cut it. I remember being in high school and this was basically all we had. Unless you were spending like 20 or $30 on a MAC brush, you didn't have Sigma, you didn't have Elysium, you didn't have BH Cosmetics. You didn't have these brands that actually made decent artistry brushes. And that's really what set the artists apart from the amateurs, was the fact that they were using tiny sponges of death to stab at their eyeballs in incoherent blotches of color. If you want to look like crusty, dried paint, go ahead and use one of these. Ooh, there's a hair on it. <laughs> Oops. But if you literally take the two seconds to do an upgrade, it is a world of difference. I don't even understand why they sell these stupid little disposables anymore, because first off, they're horrible for the environment. And if you're not doing it on someone else, there's no reason you need it to be disposable. Obviously don't lick it and put it back in the palette. And of course, don't use it if you have pink eye. But for God's sake, that's what washing makeup brushes are for as well. Hygiene 101, my friends. Honestly, for all of the Visco girls who are obsessing over saving the turtles, yes, ban the straws, but can we work on the stupid makeup sponges next? Because they are useless, they are impractical, and they are horrible for Mother Earth. As I apply my eyeshadow with a not disposable makeup sponge, let's segue into our next topic, which is the one you chose on Instagram, about food always looking better on the box or in the picture than it does in real life. This is actually something I found out years ago as a child that I had to touch on again in a marketing and advertising class. But did you know that the reason that the milk in cereal and commercials always look so good is because they're not using milk? They're using glue. They're using liquid white glue because it shows up better than actual milk. And trust me, I do makeup on the internet. So I know that sometimes in an Instagram photo or something, you do have to enhance colors just to make sure that they look on camera the way they do in real life. But when you are completely and falsely changing things, whether it's in your Instagram picture or if it's in your commercial for your granola cereal, that's like false advertising because you know that it doesn't actually look or taste that good unless it's 4 a.m. Let me tell you, Cereal at like 6.30 in the morning tastes way different than it does at two o'clock in the morning. But the food in the pictures always looks better. And then even at restaurants, you go into the restaurant and you look at the Juicy Impossible Burger from Burger King, or you look at this delicious basket of fries that you cannot wait to just chew. You cannot wait to masticate them. You cannot wait to swallow them down your esophagus and digest them in your beautiful belly and absorb them through your intestines. But the second they come back to you, Oh no, they don't look like they did on the menu or in the pictures. It's kind of like Tinder profile versus how they actually show up IRL. Yeah, this isn't what I signed up for. 
The truth is the best food is mama's or grandmother's or boppy G auntie's cooking, home cooking. And even if you try to take a picture of that delicious meal, the photo will never do it justice. It always tastes 50,000 times better than it looks. And there is no way to make it look better. Have you seen Indian food? It looks like barf. There is no way to make it look better. But there is also nothing on this earth that tastes better. It also tastes better when you eat it with your hands and with ruti, fresh chapati, than when you eat it with a spoon. So FYI, friends, if you want to make your food taste better, don't do the salt. It's not good for your blood pressure. Go ahead and eat it with your fingers. And I swear to God, the inner child in you will thank me. Case closed. We're just gonna time travel, and right now, it is Christmas on my eyeballs. It's from this Urban Decay palette. It's technically called the G-Train, um, which if you're not from New York, just sounds sexual, but if you're from New York, you know what's up. <laughs> the thing is that it kind of looks like Christmas on the inside. I mean, doesn't really look like a train. It looks like Christmas. But you know what, Urban Decay, you tried, and it looks fine on my eyes, so we're going with that. I just blended this in, I put it in little layers, and then I blended it out. Uh, again, using a real brush, not a shitty sponge. And next, I'm going to line it with some liquid liner from The Balm Cosmetics. And I'm also going to actually put some eyebrows on my face. Because remember that one makeup tutorial, I put gel eyeliner on my eyebrows. And then the other makeup tutorial, I forgot to do my eyebrows completely. So third time is a charm. Boom! Brows are on. And you know, I always overdo them a little bit just so that I can take my foundation brush and take it right down in the middle on that unibrow. And let me tell you, it makes them look fleekish. The next topic you requested are nude beaches. And you may not have ever been to a nude beach, but by the end of this video, you will understand exactly what you should expect if you ever dare to go to one. Let me just preface this by saying I live in the San Francisco Bay Area. People here are um, very liberal, both with their politics and their genitalia. And if you've ever seen on TV beta breakers or certain parades, they pretty much have to bleep out half of the stuff you see because there are naked people in every which way possible. And Santa Cruz as well. Santa Cruz is my home away from home. If you ever see me surfing, come holla. I'll probably wave at you and then eat crap into a wave and get a water enema, but then I'll come out and I'll hug you. It'll be great. But Santa Cruz as well has its fair share of nude beaches. And they're not always what you might think. I'm actually gonna do my eyeliner without flinging my hands every which direction, so. Bum, 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 ba -dum. So if you've never been to a nude beach before, you're probably wondering, what is it like? Do people sunbathe? Do people swim? Do they talk to each other about their love of being naked? Or is it like a regular beach, just without clothes? And let me tell you, my friend, that heavily depends on which nude beach you're going to. There's one kind of right underneath the Golden Gate Bridge. It is absolutely stunning, uh, but the people there are super friendly. They usually have a bunch of dogs with them. Maybe they're going to have a bonfire or play the ukulele, and they pretty much leave you alone. And you know what? If you want to go over there and try to play the ukulele, they will gladly let you. However, there are other beaches where the exact opposite is true. And I would say that 99% of nude beaches are this way. They're all old, semi-creepy men. The fact that they are naked probably makes them seem a little bit more creepy than they actually are. But let me tell you, at least as someone who has titties, the female body seems to draw a lot more of attention at these beaches. It's kind of like what everyone thinks of when it comes to a nude beach, when the reality is, it's just a sausage fest. And the sausage fest is normally older men. I guess, um, at least in my experience, as I've become older, I've become more confident and I have become less self-conscious of my body. I still have issues, but overall, I feel a little bit better in a bikini than I would have ever been able to feel 10 years ago. I wonder if some of these people in their 50s, 60s, and yes, even 70s, have just gotten to such a place of liberation that they think that their bodies are not just okay, but are amazing. And unfortunately, some Sometimes they try to press this on others. Thank God, not literally. But it's basically a large sausage fest. 
And the second that somebody notices that someone without a sausage has walked onto the beach, even if you're still fully clothed at this point, it's almost like they all just want to come talk to you and ask you, have you ever been to this beach before? How's the weather? Did you see that turtle out there? No, sir, I didn't see the turtle, but I'd rather dive into the ocean and cover my body from you and be closer and hang out with the turtle than I would with you. So please continue suntanning your ball sack in that corner of the beach and leave me and my friends alone so that we can just have a good time without our clothes over here, okay? The men on this channel are intelligent, but as a public service announcement for people who are not viewers of this channel, men, we don't want to see your ball sack. We're not interested, and especially me. I'm gay. Thank you. Next. Also, I would love to know if any beautiful butterflies are from the Bay Area or just somewhere else on the planet. I would love to see you. I used to travel a lot more than I currently do just because of planes and emissions and feeling guilty about that and not wanting to ruin the environment, but I would love to see you and I've done meetups in the past, so maybe, just maybe, we could have one again. Let me know where and what you're thinking so that I could come give you a hug in person and you don't have to, you know, come knock me off my surfboard. <laughs> To top it all off, we've got this limited edition Pixie plus Chloe Morello lip gloss. It's supposed to be super sparkly, and because I applied the Bite Beauty, I don't need to go in with 50,000 extra steps. Uh, 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 uh. But that gives us a little bit of sparkle, and now it is your turn to play the game. If you have something to rant about, literally send me a video on Facebook or Twitter or something, and I would love to watch it, and we could play this game together. <laughs> So this is the final makeup look that we created. I like it a lot. And if you liked it, don't forget to that like button and don't forget to whoopsh that subscribe button. If you ring the notification bell, we can play this game again in the future. And if you're not already on Instagram, shameless self-promotion, I also rant about things there as well as do other polls and fun giveaways. Always remember to be beautiful inside and out and I cannot wait to see you in the next video. <laughs> Love you guys. Bye.